It's go time. What's going on? This is Mortal Mike with another Watcher of Realms video. And I had to come with this video today because I had to give a minor apology. Um, I snubbed the champion in one of my videos. I think it was two videos back. I said that they were great. And then I put in the text that they weren't great. And then I started using them and I found out that they are amazing for Watchers of Realms Immortal Codex, particularly the first boss. I'm gonna show you who they are. You may have, a, you probably have an idea of who they are if you've seen my content so far, but it is none other than one of the hated, most hated defenders in the game, Azor. Azor. Now, when I first started playing with them, I was like, oh, I'm gonna build them, you know, I'm gonna give them some high damage. She's gonna do some amazing things. You know, I couldn't even get the three parts to align to give him the defense um, damage taking thing. But then I was like, eh, okay, I built him. He's working. He's doing all right. Um, I'll tell you now, with this, with, with the build that you see right now, I would emphasize giving him even more speed, attack speed. Um, reason being, first time that I, the first time that I built him, I built him with the intention to do damage because I know that he can do damage. What I ended up doing was. I put him into the matches. I was like, man, he is really not doing damage. But okay, maybe, you know, this is helping out. So one of his skills is that when he, well, his talent, sorry about that. His talent is his damage scales off defense, which is great. When the Iron Hammer is in the heated state, which is triggered here by his passive attack. After 10 strikes, the hammer enters the heated state. So that's just something good to remember. But when he's in a heated state, attacks have a 30% chance of inflicting that the enemy was stunned, which is not a long stun duration, but actually one second is not bad. But the reason I say that is this attack. This attack covers nine grids of, uh, of area, including him. So it's him, left and the right of him, and then two, three stacks in front of him, which is really, really nice. It's way more range than it shows. Like You don't know that's the range that it covers. Here's why that's awesome. Each strike causes 125% damage up to five enemies in front of the caster when the skill is activated. When the skill ends, remove the, removes the hammer's heated state. When he's A5, that removal doesn't happen anymore. So it just stays in the heated state, which is really, really dope. I wish I could just keep that happening. Um, but he's attacking five enemies with a chance to inflict stun. So I thought, okay, that's good. That's enough of a reason. I should put him into the fight. He can do damage, he can do stunts. Okay. I put him into the matches and he does not do what I think he's gonna do. He does not do the damage. So I took him out for a while and I was struggling. My score was looking crazy. But one thing I ended up doing was I said, you know what? I'm gonna just stick him in here with a couple different comps, see what I can figure out. And I got one that actually did a really amazing job with him. I'll tell you why. It is because of this. This is also a bonus ability here. Each attack increases his defense by 1% up to 10 stacks. So, and then you can see you can also increase that defense by 5%, the damage increased by 5% inside of heated states. So really good options. So it can really skyrocket. Um, you gain an extra 15% defense and deal 15% more damage when you're in the heated state. So your first 10 hits puts you in a heated state. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe the heated state does have a time duration of how long it lasts. Um, okay, so this is, I guess, before heated state. I don't know if it actually ends because it's hard to see. It's hard to tell if there's an animation for when it ends. I know it ends at the use ultimate. But if I'm not mistaken, it, it's already back on by the time you get your ultimate back, which we're gonna talk about as well. Right now, you're seeing that the cost of this ultimate is 1,000. I will tell you, it builds up so quickly because of the battle that they're in and he's hitting so many enemies so often, it builds very, very quickly. Here's the winner of why this guy is so amazing. Fortifying Sparks, I overlooked this. Fortifying Sparks, when Tempering Strikes is active, which is the ultimate, every strike will apply a buff to one random ally within three tiles based on the current status of the hammer. So heated strikes or non-heated strikes. If it's normal, if you did it before he did it, which is honestly is very difficult to do by my, by, for my practices, um, applies a shield equal to 110%. I have it at 110, it can get to 120. 
percent of the hero's defense for 10 seconds. That does not sound like a lot until you realize the defense is actually pretty nice. Right now I have them at 10,206. In this game mode, they don't take a lot of heavy hits. 10,000 is plenty shield. But the kicker is the second part. Um, in the heated state, that shield lasts for 10 seconds, by the way. That heated state um, applies both the normal state buff, so that shield and damage increase. So very similar to a Constance or to a Dolores in the sense that he's boosting all of the champions around him. Now, here's what's, here's what's great too. In that Immortal Codex battle, it's a very small area that you're fighting in. He does it to every one of the enemy, every one of the champions in that pocket. So I started trying new comps of putting them in the front, you know, putting most of my guys within the front here. I even tried a few with Estrid where she's right behind the line and chopping the whole section as they come up. So really good stuff is coming out. But this attack right here, and it's also, it shows it's 10%, 15%, um, I'm sorry, I was reading the seconds, 15% damage boost. And it looks like the damage increase can get to 20%. That's awesome. So I can give 120% shield to my defense, of my defense to allies nearby, and I can give them a 20% damage increase across the board. And I don't have to pull constants, and I don't have to find some way to bootleg Dolores into the game mode, because she's not showing up, guys. She's just not coming in this game mode, sorry. But think of how easy that option is compared to what you have to do to try to get other champions. Um, I thought this was awesome. And I'll say also with this, I gave him this artifact, which is the Tuning Crystal. After every 10 basic attacks landed, deals AOE, physical damage one time equal to 200% damage multiplier to at most five targets and restores HP for 10% of damage dealt. Let me tell you this, I think this is worded improperly because I see the icon for Tuning Crystal over his head a lot when we're doing the missions. I mean, a lot. So he is healing himself as well and doing a bunch of extra AOE attacks, which isn't insane damage. I don't know, I don't believe these also get the benefit of stun. It'd be even more awesome if they did. But that is what's happening now. So he is going from being a defender to being a powerhouse of hitting consistently and then also just giving out buffs the entire time he's doing it. Now I will say to you folks that have gotten him and you don't like the fact that you got an Awaken, there's a nice buff for you guys. Awaken one, when attacking, there's a 10% chance to cast four to five sparks to one ally within three tiles. That three tiles range, by the way, is a gigantic range. It's not like just one, two, three. Think of it like one of the diamond ranges, like a, like a hatset. Um, it's a giant range covering where he's at. So it catches a lot of, um, a lot of uh, champions nearby to give them support benefits. Also, this here, attacks, attacks and deals 110% damage to one enemy. Each attack builds up energy for the hammer. After 10 attacks, the hammer enters the heated state. You've seen that part before. Uh, wait a second. Oh, that's Awaken 3. Why is it showing Awaken 3 on Awaken 1? That is so confusing. I was going to say the CC effect duration, which I believe is a stun duration, lasts for another second, which is really awesome. No, wait. Is that... We're skipping that part. That part's irrelevant to what I'm telling you guys. The, my main thing I wanted to show you guys is that I found a way to buff all of the other champions around me with a champion that I literally thought was was um, was not doing the job I expected him to do. What I'm gonna do here, there's, there's a little bit of RNG in this, I will be honest, because it depends on who um, is getting those buffs. Oh, one more thing to mention. This guy uh, right here, Azor, he pairs wonderfully wonderfully with people's favorite favorite fighter when i find out where he is wrath i need wrath to get a5 as soon as possible i'm going to need for him to hurry up um and i'm going to give him what he needs to do it because his lord skill of giving it 35 percent attack increase puts azor in a freaking frenzy of landing attacks landing stuns landing heals giving out abilities and since he's attacking so fast his rage is skyrocketing in speed of how fast it comes back i will say it a hundred more times i'd rather just show you guys so i'm gonna do my auto run uh, yeah i still click raids right here 
So as you can see, the last time you saw me playing this, I think it said 44% and it was like a B or something. It is now an S, top 11%, it went down 1%, so more people are getting it done, which is nice. I got it to an S, and now I have a chance when I do my autos, there's still a chance, there's still a tiny little bit of RNG in there. But um, it went from uh, A tier, straight past A plus, into S tier with this working. I'm gonna show you guys this working for me. I'm gonna just go straight to an auto battle. I already have my team together. Most of them are stacked in the front. Uh, so, as you can tell, my team consists of, I have Abomination, actually, I can just zoom in here, right? Yep, I have Abomination, Azor, Wrath. I also have Volca facing inward. I have her doing that because if she does her ult, I want it to be more of a chance she aims at the mobs towards the end. And of course, Azor up here, and Gluttony, which is interestingly enough, doing a great job in this fight. I also have Arta, Aatrox over here in the corner. So he's gonna be ready when it's time for him to come out. So I want you to just see how this works. Isn't that funny? Like he just doesn't do crazy damage right there. The numbers weren't bad, but in this game was not amazing. So you see the battles going on. I want you to make, look, look over, look at Azor over the top of his head and just see how often he keeps getting that tuning crystal. That's letting you know he's landing at least 10 hits. Every time you see that he's landing at least 10 hits. So that's giving stuns out. You can see the little stun spirals on top of people, but also check out when he does his ult here. Look at all these little shields popping up. That shield just went on Aatrox. Aatrox dies as he plays, but he just got a shield to extend his duration of being on the field, which is amazing. Right now, that they're doing okay. I think this is gonna end up being an A run. Uh, yep, just put Azor back in there. You see the um, shields coming right back out again, but see the numbers? I got close to the numbers I had before. That was an auto run, so I said there's a little bit of RNG, a little bit, but did you see that he empowered them to do more damage? That's one, two, three, four, five other champs he's giving extra attack to and shields to so they don't die. I gotta get Wrath in A5 because he still dies. <laughs> he's gotta be able to heal himself. It's not working out well for him. But I wanted to show that to say this guy is kicking butt with my teams. He's now become a staple in my teams because I don't have constants and I need a way to buff my champions that are already doing damage. And since he's in Nightmare, it makes it great because they get that 35% buff. So now they're attacking quick. They're doing more damage all together as a whole. Um, and he becomes an amazing support tank instead of just a damage dealing tank. It was very, very unexpected. Um, I tried to build him for damage. Nope, didn't work out. I'm gonna add more speed to him. I'm gonna add maybe like another 100 speed to his kit because now I see what he's doing. And what's crazy is you don't have to build his kit for that. You can give him some defense, but I think now it's a good idea to give him attack speed. Maybe a little more rage regen in there because he's getting it so quickly. You saw how fast he got it at least two or three times in that battle. Lovely. <laughs> so I wanted to drop that gem in there for you guys. I had to send it because I gave Azor some slack in the first... Uh, actually, my second video that I ever made, um, and it's talking about Immortal Codex, and I gave him slack, and I had to do it justice because he did wonderful by me by buffing, or well, six in this case, six of the champions at once. Constance can't even reach all six of them in the fight unless you have them all stacked up in the front. Um, and then you want to put her in the back because she's going to be dying and you have that issue. But Vocal's already taking care of the heals. So in this case, I love this option. So if you have an Azor, I highly recommend give him some attack speed, give him some defense, and then give him some love. Put him out there, see if he does what he does for you. Um, the same way he's been doing it for me. I went up two scores. That's more points every single day. Uh, but yeah, want to show you guys, this is Mortal Mike. I hope you guys have an amazing time. And I have another video I think I'm going to try to make today. I'll probably end up posting tomorrow. Um, and I'll have another thing I got to make. I have to make another video. Um, no, yes, that's what it's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and make it next. My next video is going to be helping you guys on, tie, on Tide 115. You know we hear the timing strategy, which is wonderful. It works well. But I have something else to add to that strategy to make taking down the main boss a lot easier. So you guys have an awesome time. Remember, it's go time. Y'all have a good time and I'll see y'all around. Take care.